I think we can all agree that unconventional ergonomics or just weird layouts are starting to make their way into the affordable market. Before, layouts like these are only attainable through cold hard cash because most of them are either projects by enthusiasts or just available in private group buys. But there is this one layout called the Alice which has this crooked split in half look which people have said is good for ergonomics and one company is planning to bring it to us, the masses. Since weird keyboards and weird layouts are the trends recently and Akko's recent addition to their lineup is just that. It's weird and it caters to a niche market. Here are the timestamps. I'm also putting it in the description so that I don't waste your time. Again, like in my previous keyboard video, this is not a review. If you're expecting me to compare and recommend or urge you to get this thing, this ain't it chief. Think of this as just another perspective on this product. Also, I won't be doing a sound test, stock, or any sort of testing on the other components. I'm just gonna give you my honest thoughts and some technical details. The Akko ACR Pro Alice is a $115 Alice layout keyboard with 68 keys. The top and bottom housing is made out of this nice and frosted CNC acrylic. It has the typical USB Type-C port which is very much needed in 2022. You can also find 5 rubber bumpers underneath the board which tilts the keyboard to a fixed angle. This also prevents the keyboard from sliding around. If that's not your thing, they also have included a height adjusting feet that allows you to raise the keyboard a little bit higher. This kit in particular has included both Akko's black and white ASA keycaps and Akko's linear crystal switches. Moving on inside the box, we also have an extra polycarbonate plate. The unit that I received has the metal plate pre-installed. An instruction manual, you can also download their online PDF manual if yours went missing. A spare daughter board. If yours didn't come with any spare, I think only the units that has been shipped after May 12 of 2022 has that. But don't quote me on that, I've only read it on their Discord. A nice white metal switch puller with a very small Allen key, which is very useful. A robust pale purple wire keycap puller. An Akko branded coiled cable, which is also a nice addition. Extra keycaps. Extra silicone socks or gasket for the plate. I think people refer to this as socks because the plate wears them like one, whereas the other variants sandwich the plates in between. Also something to take note of, the kit doesn't have any extra case screws so don't lose them. That's it, I think. Going back to the keyboard, let's talk about keycaps. The one they included are the black and white ASA profile keycaps which they also sell separately if you're interested in it. They are deliciously double shot and beautifully made. There are little to no imperfections in the moldings and in the injection process. The one I got doesn't have any sub legends which is understandable since it's an all-in-one kit that appears to the mass market and I'm guessing not a lot of people really like the subs. But for me personally, I would have loved to get the Japanese subs. I have an anime profile picture, do you really need to ask? Also, they included the rest of the keycaps along with the novelties and spacebar. This is nice considering that this kit alone costs around 30 US dollars. Anyways, if you're coming from the Cherry profile or OEM profile, ASA profile is tall. I guess you look into this a little bit more since there is a big difference. Not a deal breaker but something to take note of. Personally, I do not mind ASA profile. The angle and height that the keyboard provides are substantial enough for me. It's not distracting or spraining to use, it's actually fairly decent. But your mileage may vary since I alone cannot articulate my experience in a two-dimensional YouTube video. In summary, the keycaps are double shot and they are nice. Good job, Akko. Let's move on to switches. The Akko Crystal Clears are fairly new addition to Akko's switches lineup, as far as I know at least. They are linear and on the softer side. I won't be doing a sound test on these guys since I'm pretty sure I won't be doing them justice. If you want a stock sound test, I'll link a few videos on the description and you can check those out and judge them there. I'm gonna say this right off the bat, I don't use linears so I'm probably biased, but I don't enjoy these switches. I mean, I like them, they sound nice, but I don't enjoy using them as a daily driver. They are too soft and they activate too early for me. Now, some of you might want that, but I'm telling you right now, this switches doesn't need to bottom out in order to register a click. I'll talk about this more in depth later. In summary, they sound nice as stock. 
and they do look like crystals. Here is a closer look at their PCB. Just pause the video and look at the details that you want to look at. Now as you can see here, the PCB also supports screw in stabs but that's an expense you'd have to make yourself since there are no screw in stabs included. The free plate mount stabs are pretty snug and not that loose but it wobbles a bit. And yeah, like I mentioned earlier, the kit comes with an extra daughter board. And yeah, almost forgot the PCB is north facing so do take note of some interference. Speaking of stabilizer, the kit comes with Akko's new double shot TPU plate mount stabs with palm housing. Yeah, that's a mouthful. But they did state the palm plus TPU stems will minimize the rattles and pings. I think they also sold this thing separately, just check out their website if you're interested. Here are some diagrams they've posted on their Twitter. Just pause the video so that you can have a closer look on it. And yeah, they did come pre lubed, which is nice. My order also comes with a free Akko cable as a gift. Thanks, Akko. Now, this is not included in every order, but I might as well include it for the stock cable comparison. In summary, the free white cable that comes with the kit is nice, it's very similar to the ones they actually sell. It's good and it's still useful. I'd have to say though that the clean white is most likely not gonna last, at least for me. So is it actually easy to adjust and actually daily this thing? Or is it cumbersome and not worth it? Well here are my thoughts. Check the timestamp if it's relevant to you. It's fairly easy to adjust, especially if you're coming from a 68% layout. It's pretty much the same, just think of it like you tilted your keyboard at an angle, that's pretty much the Alice. But in the end, it will depend on your typing habits. For me, the one thing that I find difficult is that I always press my G key with my right hand. And as you can see here, the G key is on the left side. So naturally, my fingers will lean towards pressing an empty slot except for the G key. Also having two space bars feels natural, surprisingly. There isn't much of a difference when gaming since on a normal setting you'll be using your left hand as well. And like I said before, it's pretty much a 68% layout but tilted. There's only one thing that I find difficult when gaming is that the number row is too far away for me. For example, in Rainbow Six Siege, the 6 is mainly used for throwing drones and it's something that you do every round. Not gonna lie, it's uncomfortable to press every time I do it. Same can be said in Genshin, whenever you wanna change characters quickly to do a combo, I find myself struggling pressing the number 2 since it's too far away. Will I be able to adjust? Yes. Is it a deal breaker? If you wanna use this for gaming? No, as long as you're able to adjust. Does it look cool though? Yes, yes it does. Now here is where I encountered a lot of problems. If you use a lot of hotkeys for either editing in Photoshop and doing illustrations, and you like to do 100 hotkeys like me, then it's not just possible. I mean, it is possible, but it will be one hell of a finger gymnastics. So why don't you use both of your hands when typing hotkeys then, you might be asking. Well, some of us use the right hand to hold a pen or a mouse, and lifting your hand just to do a single hotkey might sound fast in practice, but trust me it will add up over time. Let me show you what I mean. Let's say you want to change the UN saturation in Photoshop, or let's say you want to do a new layer. And if you're like me that uses a very specific hotkey and hardwire their brains for their hotkey, it is really painful to use. In my case, I always bind my pen key to the end key. When doing illustrations, normally my hand would rest on the left control and Z so that when I press it, it's quick enough to undo mistakes and recover momentum quickly. And Z is also the hotkey for pan and zoom. Normally, after the zoom, I would have gravitated to pressing the end key again to draw new parts. But honestly, this board has to force me to let go of the left control to press the end key again. Yeah, that's not ideal guys, don't do that. Clearly, this thing is designed to be used two-handed. Also, if you are planning on remapping the right alt key to the shift key, then you are out of luck, since it's labeled as a system key, which means you can't change it. 
If you really like this board though, then I'm sure you will find a way to make it work. But for those who use a lot of hotkeys, do take note of this. It's nice and cumbersome at the same time, but for me, the value alone that you get from this is pretty much worth it. And it seems like I'm not the only one on that. Almost all of the video reviews for this thing has been positive so far, except I guess for the north facing issue. A lot of people don't like that. I know I did say a lot of issues that I encountered, and I will pretty much still daily this thing, even if it costs me a month to adjust. But yeah, it's good.